hope that wherever you are in the world, you're doing very, very well. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm sharing two eye studies that I did in these past few days and I'll try to explain what I did and kind of talk about the process a little bit and the materials that I used. So hopefully um, it can be useful to you as well. So we're getting straight into the materials. Now I'm using acrylic paint for both of these and my palette consists of cadmium red deep, red ochre, olive green, cerulean blue, raw sienna, cadmium yellow medium and white. Now if you have burnt sienna, I would recommend using that instead of the red ochre that I'm using here because it gives a much more neutral tone, um, and especially since I like using it for my underpaintings. Then for brushes, these are just some of my favorite ones and you'll see that I use kind of a mix of all of these, um, well pretty much all of these for both of the paintings. I just change them depending on what I want to do. I usually start with a slightly bigger brush and then slowly move on to adding details to the tiniest one. As for paper and stuff like that, I typically paint either in my sketchbook or on watercolour paper, which is what I did for these paintings, and both of them were primed using white gesso. But you could also alternatively use canvas or wooden boards. Personally, I've tried both, but I'm not the biggest fan of canvas, and whilst I do like painting on primed wood, I don't usually have a lot lying around, and so I save it for my maybe larger and more thought-out pieces. So I wasn't using it for these sketches. And then other things that I keep around are just a jar full of water to water down my paint or to clean my brushes, um, and a rug to dry brushes and that kind of stuff, or to like wipe off paint if I messed up on the painting. Um, and I think that's about it. So uh, we're finally getting started with the painting and for this first study I'm using a reference picture that my, one of my best friends sent me. So Julia, if you're watching, thank you for that. Um, and as you can see, I like to start my pieces with an underpainting. So here I'm using a mix of red ochre and olive green because as I said, red ochre gives it gives a really nice red tone, but I think it makes the underpainting a bit unbalanced. And so I like to make it more neutral using the olive green. And I'm just using it to establish the basic values that I see in the reference photo, which is essentially just the variations in brightness in the different areas of the picture. So if you're quite new to this, I would highly recommend keeping a black and white version of the reference on the side during this first step, because it makes it a lot easier to identify different values when you're not being the distracted by the colors as well and I'm not using any other color other than this mixture for the underpainting I'm not using white or anything for the lighter areas I'm just diluting the paint and then for the darker areas like the crease of the eye and the iris and that and that kind of stuff um, I'm using the paint as it is kind of a bit thicker and that gives the darker look once I've let this first layer dry, I move on to adding colour and for this I like to start by blocking in areas of colour as I see them in the reference. So you can see that I'm starting with that pink area in the left corner of the eye and the crease and then, sorry if you just heard the cat, <laughs> she just jumped on my desk. Um, and then I'm moving to the lighter kind of yellow part that's on the eyelid and so on and so forth until pretty much the whole area is covered. And then at that point, I'll continue adding more subtle variations of color until I'm satisfied with the look of it and I decide to move on to details and all of that. And as you can probably tell, I do like my paintings to have a warm sort of reddish yellowish tone, but I think it's very important to have balance within every piece. And so I am also adding tiny specks of light blue and purple and even green in certain areas. So for example, the under eye area generally tends to have a more purple and cooler undertone. So that's where I would mainly add my purple and lilacs and maybe even some blue tones because that's where they fit best. And then if I wanted to add green other than in the iris, because even when it comes to like brown eyes, a lot of the time when they're in direct sunlight, like in this case, you can see a lot of green undertones. I like to put green tones kind of in more yellowish areas, but then really just wherever you think they would look good, anything goes. And obviously if you're going for a like 100% realistic look, this is probably not the right video for you as you have probably noticed, but um, I like 
exaggerating these subtle variations of color within the skin because I think they make the piece look a lot more dynamic and lively and it's a look that I personally really enjoy. And now we're getting to my absolute favorite moment of the painting process. I adore adding highlights and I've said this before, but I just feel like they really bring everything together and it just uh, it's so satisfying to see a piece come to life like that. Even if it's just even if uh, even if it's just a tiny um, study like this one is, it's just so exciting. I, I love seeing it all come together like that. And then we're moving on to the second study. So for this one, I'm using a reference that a lovely subscriber sent me over on Instagram. Um, her username is Chenwright, and I really wanted to say thanks to her as well. And this one I had to approach a little bit differently because I had primed my watercolor paper and then I went over it and did my sketch and then I set it with some graphite um, setting spray or like fixative, but when I started the underpainting, the fixative was rejecting the watered down paint and so I had to wipe it all off and I had to go straight in with thicker paint and I think I struggled a lot more with this because of it, because I didn't already have my values in place and so I had to think right from the start about getting right both value and colour. And I think I spent a whole bunch of time working on it and changing things around and you'll see that I was kind of struggling with it. And then I realized that it was just lacking contrast, like the darks and the shadows were not dark enough. And so everything just kept looking flat, no matter how much color and saturation and different tones I added. And then when I fixed that and I actually went in with like a darker brown in the iris and did the lashes and all of that, I started liking it a lot more and I actually really enjoyed the end result. And I think looking back at it now, I can see that in the first part of the painting, I was still trying to do sort of an underpainting as well. So if you go back and look at it, I, you can notice that I was using a very narrow range of colors I would say so all of the colors that I was using whether they were lighter or darker or whatever they were still very similar and I think I was still trying to establish those basic values and only later I went on to adding like red tones and actual colors into the picture which is something very different from what I did in the first piece because I went straight into it with color so i started with red and yellow and whatnot 
And so I just think it's really funny because I'm so used to kind of separating value and color at the very beginning of the painting because I find it a lot easier and it's a lot more intuitive and I get a lot better results with it. And I actually think I should probably practice this more to go straight in without an underpainting and try to really understand how to put value and color together because I think it's a very valuable skill to have and I know it comes natural for some people doesn't happen for me as you can notice in this painting I completely messed up the dark values but that's also part of why I like recording myself painting because you realize a lot of things that you wouldn't otherwise um, when you look back at yourself painting and you kind of realize what decisions you actually made and try to understand why you made that decision and not another perhaps. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did because I'm probably going to do a part two to this. I have a couple more references that I want to paint from and I'm thinking of doing a bit more like creative studies. So incorporating gold paint and more like geometric details perhaps. I also want to take some reference pictures with some really cool sort of editorial glittery makeup and try to paint that because I know it's going to be a lot of fun. So please leave me a comment to let me know if you enjoyed this and I wish you all a very very lovely week and I hope to see you soon with a new video. Bye!